Hi, I'm John Slapsinski, Collection Manager of Florida Museum of Natural History. We're going to tour the recent invertebrate collection here at the museum. The collection has roughly 550,000 lots of mollusks. So the collection is divided up into fluid preserved collections and dry collections which would just be dry shells. So the dry collections have information available in a database on our website. So this little beauty is a predator on anemones. So drill a hole into the anemone and suck on the fluid in the anemone. You all probably know Janthenas. When you have winter storms that blow in, you get these beautiful purple snails. And what they'll do is they'll make a raft of bubbles of slime and they'll float around and they'll hunt things like man of war jellyfish, really nasty things. And they'll float around till they get a man of war and then they'll eat it. And they've got this just gorgeous counter coloration. So as these are floating around in the water column, from the top, the birds see dark water. From the bottom, fish see light air. So that counter coloration keeps them hidden from their predators. So squids are the only mollusks that have a closed circulatory system. So that means they can pump their blood rapidly, which also means they're really quick, aggressive, fast predators. And they run around and use these long tentacles to grab fish. And then once they grab the fish, They've got a beak, almost like a parrot beak, which they use to take big chunks out of the fish, and then they'll swallow those. Their suckers have little hooks on them. They're almost toothed on the edges, which allows them to grab slimy fish and hang on to them. And these are just really wonderful predators. And because of upwelling events, they'll gently get washed ashore. The giant squid that we found was still the chromatophores, there are pigment cells in the skin, and in some cases, these animals are still firing their chromatophores, still showing their pigment. We had an octopus that lived in our fish tank upstairs that would hold itself over the stairwell and turn bright red when somebody would walk by. Florida used to have a really good shrimp fishery, and boats would go out, and they would bring up some deeper water animals, including things like these Junonia and used to dump them kind of in a, a dump of bycatch. Here's another Scaphella species. Scaphella is the genus of Junonia. And this is a deeper water animal common off of Louisiana and off of the northern Gulf Coast. I can show you another one that was also really a common bycatch from those deeper water fisheries. This is Conus delicertii, and these are really common in deeper waters off of Florida. But we don't get to see them very often because we can only access the shallow water. We not only have marine animals, there are lots of terrestrial snails including this magnificent species from Madagascar. There are lots and lots of undescribed species. And the problem is there are very few people who study invertebrates of any kind. And so there aren't enough people for the amount of diversity. So if you think about animals, 99% of them are invertebrates. And it's a mishmash of lots of unrelated things. This is the uh, giant Atlantic cardiad. You know, it's a huge species, pretty common, nice to find. But there are some really cool cardiads that do unusual things. Here's one from the Pacific called Corculum. So why do you think it has this really bizarre shape? What these guys do is they have blue-green algae in their tissues, in their mantle. There are little clear spots in the shell that act like windows that allow light to come down. And the shell is flattened so that has a large flat surface area to face towards the sun. And the little windows let the light in. And that gives the algae light to make energy, which the clam also uses. What these clams do is they'll sit nestled in coral with the shell gaping wide open and the tissues that are exposed have the blue-green algae that make energy for them. So they're able to inhabit coral reef areas that have almost no energy, almost nothing floating around the water. They're crystal clear water, but they're getting enough energy supplements from the algae to be able to live in those environments. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tour of invertebrates at Florida Museum. And I hope someday that we can see each other in person after the restrictions are over.